Welcome everyone, my name is Jessica and this is Simple, Cheap and Easy DIY. In today's video, we're going to be making this set of Scarecrow Porch Decor Signs. I'm going to start off by taking this Scarecrow in his little blue overalls and I'm going to be using this messenger bag that has the burlap and blue and I'm going to be cutting off the straps since we're going to be using those for the leg bottoms. And I'm just going to cut one piece the length of his legs and then cut that into two pieces which I'll use one piece for each of the bottom of his pants. Now I'm going to take this Excelsior and that's what we're going to be using for the feet, hands, and the hair. And I'm just going to apply some hot glue where the straw would be at and place that down all around the bottom uh, where the legs would be. And uh, there's a couple different things you can use for this that Dollar Tree sells. You can also use like the raffia or the, um, the skirts that are made out of raffia during the summertime. But this is what I had on hand so this is what I am using. And now I'm just going to trim, trim it up to make it look a little bit neater. And then once I have it all trimmed up, then uh, it'll look more like straw. This is what it'll look like once we have it all trimmed up. And then we're going to take the two uh, pieces of burlap that we cut from previous. And we're going to apply hot glue to the bottom of the pant leg and place that over the top of the Excelsior. That way it looks like it's actually a stuffed scarecrow. Once I have that done, the same messenger bag, I'm going to cut the top portion off. It's about uh, an inch um, approximately. You'll be able to see where it's folded over. And then I'm just going to cut the Velcro off and save that because we're going to be using that later on. Once I have um, that piece all cut out, I'm going to measure it against the piece of his arm, um, so for the, for the sleeves of his shirt, and I'm going to cut those at a little bit of a slant as you can see here, and that's what we're going to be using for the cuffs. Before we glue the cuffs down, I'm going to repeat the same step. I'm going to apply some of the Excelsior and just trim that up for both of his hands. Once uh, we have that all trimmed up, then we'll place the uh, piece of the material that we just cut to complete the sleeves. And here's his completed uh, arms and legs. Now for the overalls, I'm gonna take these two buttons and just place them uh, in place of the painted on buttons, just to give a little bit of 3D dimension. And then I'm gonna carefully take off this welcome sign and uh, place it on the side because we're gonna be putting that back on. And then just gluing down um, some more of the Excelsior for his hair. Taking the messenger bag again, I'm gonna cut a piece off the width of his hat and that's what we're gonna use to make his hat. Now taking the hot glue, I'm gonna apply the hot glue all over the painted portion of the hat and then just glue the material on. Once uh, I have that down, then I'll just trim up the sides and the bottom to complete the hat. Once the hat's all trimmed up, I'm gonna apply hot glue back over where the welcome sign was and place that back on. Now you can always paint the, the welcome if you'd like, but I like the way it looks, so I left it as is. And then taking the Velcro from previous that we saved, I'm gonna uh, apply hot glue over the patches on his pants and place both of the Velcro strips on. That way, again, it makes it look more three-dimensional. Now taking another piece of that same material that I cut in the shape of a pocket, I'm gonna glue the pocket um, and glue the material down to actually make a, a real pocket on him and then place some flowers in. And here's what your completed first sign will look like. Taking our second sign, I'm going to repeat the same steps as previous. I'm going to cut two pieces of the burlap strap for the bottom of the pant leg. I'm going to glue the Excelsior to the bottom of both legs. 
I will also be trimming that up and then once I have the, it trimmed, I'm going to glue down the burlap to make the bottom pant leg. If you liked today's video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and let me know if you're going to be making these for your porch decor or if you're going to be making them and using them for your indoor decor. Now taking this messenger bag with the pink print on the front, I'm going to cut a one inch strip and then I'm going to cut at an angle for the sleeves um, for this one and apply some Excelsior for the hands. Once I have that glued down, then I will glue the piece of material down to complete the cuffs for the sleeves. Repeating the same steps as previous, I'm going to remove the happy fall sign and I'm going to take the messenger bag and cut a section out for the hat, glue that down and trim. Once I have that down, then I will take more of the Excelsior and I will place her hair on. Once I have the hair in place, then I will glue back the happy fall sign. And again, you can paint that if you'd like, but I really just like the way it looked so I decided to leave it as is. Taking a piece of that same material, I cut out a pocket shape and glued that to the pocket on her apron and just placed um, a little pink hydrangea in to give it a little bit of color and add a flower touch. And to finish off the second sign, I'm just going to glue two buttons down to her apron, again to give a little bit of a 3D effect. And then once that's done, uh, your second sign will be complete. And here's your completed scarecrows for your front porch decor. making this easy fall decor in yellow, green, and brown theme. Start off by taking this friends gather here sign. So we're gonna be using the back of the sign. And I'm also gonna be taking this calendar, which I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna be using this thankful and blessed uh, picture. Once I have that taken out, I'm gonna flip that over and I'm gonna be using a glue stick to glue this onto the board. I did find that this actually works the best uh, to keep it wrinkle free. Once I have the glue on, I'm just going to glue that to the back of the sign and make sure that you do press it firmly down all the way uh, around the edges and in the middle. Once that's glued on, I'm going to take this messenger bag and I'm going to be using the strap for the frame. So I'm just going to cut that off the messenger bag and then I'm going to take the strap and actually fold that in half. And then once it's folded in half, I'm just going to take my scissors and cut that right down the middle. Now, instead of using this strap, you can also use a burlap ribbon or any other color of ribbon uh, that you would like. 
But once I have that cut in half, I'm gonna take my hot glue and just outline the bottom of the frame and I'm gonna glue the strap down and I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way around the frame and I'm gonna cut off at each section, that way it all lines up perfectly. As you can see, I'm gonna be doing here. And this is what it will look like once you have the burlap glued down and I do like the way the edges look it gives it more of a rustic feel uh, now I'm going to be taking the hanger and just applying a dab of hot glue on the back and then gluing the hanger in place And here's our completed first project. For the second project, I'm gonna take this ceramic owl and this yellow and green ceramic pumpkin, and I'm gonna apply hot glue to the bottom of the green pumpkin, and then set that on top of the yellow pumpkin. I do suggest using an E6000 glue for this for a more permanent hold. Um, next, I am going to take the hot glue and apply that to the bottom of the owl and then glue that to the top of the green pumpkin. And I'm actually going to be making two of these for this set. And here's your completed second project. For the third and final project, I'm going to use this autumn blessing box. I'm going to remove the ribbon and the hanger. Once I have that removed, I'm going to paint that in one coat of the apple barrel paint in the English ivy green. Once I have that all the way painted, I'm going to take this glass candle holder and I'm going to apply hot glue to the bottom and then just glue that to the center of the box. Again, you can use E6000 for more permanent hold. But once I have that in place, I'm going to take this pillar candle and just place into the glass holder. And then taking these yellow hydrangeas and the leaves from the hydrangeas, I'm just going to place those all around the base of the candle. Um, and you can just arrange those uh, to fill that up. And here's your completed third project. And here's all of today's projects grouped together. And this theme is the uh, more farmhouse rustic look using yellow, green, and brown colors. this wood picket fence that's great to use in your fall decor display. I'm going to start off by taking these jumbo craft sticks. I did get these craft sticks at Walmart, but you can use the large craft sticks that Dollar Tree carries. The fence will just be a little bit smaller. And I'm going to cut the bottoms off of each of the craft sticks. Once I have the bottoms cut off of all the sticks, I'm going to take a ruler and make a triangle at the top of each of the craft sticks. Once I have the uh, triangle drew on all the craft sticks, I will just cut each of those out. Once I have all the craft sticks cut, I'm going to take the apple barrel paint in the color territorial beige, and I'm going to apply one coat of paint to each of the sticks.
Once I have all my craft sticks painted, I'm gonna let that dry. And then taking the apple barrel paint in the color white, I'm gonna dry brush the white paint on all of the craft sticks. And then what I'm gonna do is once I have the paints um, all dry, I'm gonna take a little bit more of the territorial beige and I'm gonna dry brush that over the top of the white. That way it gives it more of an aged look. Next, I'm going to take four of the large craft sticks from Dollar Tree and two of the jumbo craft sticks, and I'm going to paint them in the same paint technique. Once all the paints dry, I'm going to take the ones that I've cut and I'm going to space them out evenly. I'm going to use the ruler just to make sure that they're all straight and level. Once you have them all spaced out and make sure that they um, are spaced with the same distance and they're all level, I'm going to take the large craft sticks and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to place those on the back of the picket fence part and make sure I like the positioning. Once I like how they're positioned, then I'm going to start gluing them down. Now what I did decide to do to make it a little easier, I'm going to take a pencil and just mark out where I have the uh, sticks laying. That way when I apply the glue, I make sure that I get it uh, where I'd like it to be. Once I have that done, I'm just going to apply a little dab of hot glue on each of the sticks and then place the uh, smaller sticks on. And this is what it will look like once you have them all glued into place. And this is the start of our little picket fence display. Now to make the base, what I'm gonna do is take those two jumbo craft sticks that we painted earlier, and I'm gonna cut um, one side off of each of those. And that's what I'm gonna use to make the display. I'll just go ahead and lay them out as you can see here. And I did decide that that was a little bit too long so i'm just going to mark off um, the edge of the fence once i have that marked then i'm going to cut the uh, other end that we didn't cut previously once i have those cut taking the two pieces i'm just going to glue those together in the center and i am just using hot glue but for a more permanent hold i would suggest using a wood glue once I have those in place, I'm going to apply some hot glue on the bottom of each of the fence posts and glue that to the center of the uh, base. And that's what's going to make sure that it sets up whenever you go to display it. And just to make sure that it does stay in place, I'm going to apply some hot glue to the back of each of the fence posts just for added security. Again, I do highly recommend using a wood glue, that way you have a more permanent hold. Now we're going to start working on the pumpkin sign, and for that I'm going to use a large craft stick from Dollar Tree and just paint it in the apple barrel paint in the color white. 
and I'm going to cut the ends of this one into um, a point as well. And taking these letter stickers, um, I'm going to spell out the word pumpkins and I'm going to make a little arrow using the territorial beige. I'm going to go over the edges and just kind of dab it on as you can see here to kind of give it a more rustic look and not such a clean painted look. And this is what it will look like once you have it painted. Now um, I'm going to place it on the sign and I'm just going to uh, glue that on and I'm going to point it facing downwards. Um, that way it's actually going to be pointing to some pumpkins. Now I'm going to take this mini mum and I'm going to place that on right below the pumpkin sign just to give it a nice little floral look. I really like how this looks because it matches with the sign and it's the perfect size to go with this. And I'm just going to glue this down using hot glue. That way in case I want to use it again, I can just remove it and use the flower on something else. Now since I do want to add some mini pumpkins to this, I'm going to take this section of the craft stick that was left over that we cut off and I'm going to glue that to the base to uh, kind of extend it a little bit on one section. That way we'll have something to set our little pumpkins on. And for the pumpkins, I'm going to be using um, some of these mini pumpkins. They came on the uh, little clips and I'm going to go ahead and use three for this and I'm just going to glue them on and stack them up. And here's your completed wood picket fence pumpkin display. I'm going to be making this more traditional color fall decor. I'm going to start off by taking this friends gather here sign and removing the jute twine hanger and we're going to save that because we're going to be using that later on and we're going to be using the back of the sign i'm going to leave the front as is that way it can actually be used as a reversible sign now taking these craft sticks i'm just going to cut the rounded edge off of each of the sticks and that what is what we're going to use for the border of the frame uh, once I have all of those cut, then we can start measuring them up on the sign. And I'm going to measure them out as you can see here and then trim any of the pieces uh, that are too long. Once I have all the pieces cut, we're going to start working on the back of the board. And I'm going to take this apple barrel paint in the color Snow White and give it two coats on the back. Once that's dry, I'm going to take um, this little wood sign that I got at Dollar Tree and that's what I'm going to be using to measure out the wood planks. Um, I think this actually worked really good to uh, give it even spacing. And I'm just taking a pencil and drawing out the lines.
and this is what it'll look like once you have each of the lines drew and then taking the pewter gray i'm just going to dry brush that onto each of the sections i'm going to try not to put too much on the lines that way it kind of leaves them a little bolder Once I have all the pewter gray um, dry brushed on, I'm just gonna take my white paint and just brush over that lightly. That way it makes the gray a little duller and gives it more of an age look. Once the paint's fully dry, I'm gonna take this fall sweet fall window cling and I'm gonna place that in the center of our sign and just position it however you would like um, to make sure it's even. And then take the fall sweet fall and I'm gonna place that in the middle. Once I'm happy with the way it looks, um, since this is a window cling, it doesn't actually stick on. I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue um, all the way around and that way it will hold it in place. Once it's secured in place, we can start working on the frame. And I'm gonna leave the wood uh, this natural color as I, I really like how it looks more neutral and uh, just kind of blends in. I'm just gonna take the hot glue and glue the uh, craft sticks all the way around the frame to complete it. Once you have the frame complete, I'm gonna take that jute hanger and place that back in the holes, and that's what we'll use to hang this sign. Once you have that done, then your first project would be complete. The second project, I'm gonna use two of these glass candle holders, and I'm gonna spray paint them in a coat of granite gray spray paint. Once that's dry, I'm going to take the uh, apple barrel paint in the color Snow White and I'm going to go over this and I'm actually going to give it two thin coats. That way a little bit of the gray shows through to kind of blend in with the rustic look. Once that paint's dry, I'm going to take this jute twine and I'm just going to wrap it around a few times for, uh, around the top. Once I'm happy with the amount of jute twine, I'll go ahead and just glue that and cut that and I'll repeat that for both of the jars. And here's what both jars will look like completed. Now we're gonna work on the base for the jars and I'm gonna take these larger craft sticks and I'm just gonna measure out about the, a little bit wider than the length of the jar and I'm gonna cut four pieces for each jar. Once I have those cut, I'm gonna apply a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna build uh, two squares and that will be the frame for each of the jars. Once I have the frame built, I'm just gonna take a piece of foam board and place in the bottom of each of the squares. And I'm gonna glue those down uh, using hot glue to secure them in place. And with these, I'm gonna leave them um, just the wood color as well. That way everything matches. I'm gonna take one jar and place in each of the vases. Once I have the jars centered, I'm gonna take some Spanish moss and I'm just gonna place a little Spanish moss around each of the jars. Once I have all the moss in place, I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim it up a little bit, that way it looks a little neater. Once I have that completed, I'm gonna take some of these orange hydrangeas and I'm gonna place one bunch in each of the jars. Now using these little orange pumpkins, which came off of the pumpkin picks, I'm gonna apply a little bit of hot glue and glue that to the corner of each of the bases. And 
and here's your completed second project. For the third and final project, I'm going to take this little mini wood crate and these LED fairy lights and I'm going to start off by placing the fairy lights in the crate um, and just position those where you can be able to turn the lights on and off. And taking these yellow hydrangeas, I'm going to take off the flowers and the leaves. And once I have all those removed, then I'll just start placing the hydrangeas and leaves um, in the little crate. And for this, we're going to leave the crate the, the natural wood color. That way it kind of blends and ties everything together. Once you have all the hydrangeas in place, then you'll have this cute little fall display and it's easy to turn the lights on and off. That way you can have display for both daytime and nighttime. And here's your completed third project. Here's all today's projects together. I really like how the natural wood color blends with the orange and the yellows to make a more neutral fall decor. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what's your favorite colors to decorate for fall. We're gonna be taking a Dollar Tree sign and making it over into this cute fall decor. We're going to start off by taking this glitter uh, owl sign. They do have some plain wood ones also. My store just hasn't gotten them in yet. And what I'm going to do is coat the entire owl in one layer of Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color white. I actually like the texture it gives with the glitter underneath. Next, taking the apple barrel paint in the color pewter gray, I'm going to paint the inside and top of the owl for the body. And this is what's going to give it the galvanized look in the center. Once that's dry, I'm going to take the apple barrel paint in the color white, and I'm just going to dab a makeup sponge all over um, the pewter gray, as you can see me doing here. And since it's thin layers of paint, it dries pretty quick, so you don't have to wait long in between coats. Once I have the entire thing covered um, with white, I'm going to go back over it again with the pewter gray or with granite gray, sorry. And that's actually gonna be what gives it the galvanized metal look. Now taking the white paint again, I'm gonna go over it one last time and this actually helps blend all the colors together and makes it look uh, more realistic for the galvanized look. Taking the apple barrel paint in the color Spice Carrot, I'm going to go around the owl's eyes and I'm going to be careful not to get it on the nose or the center of the eyes. the burnt umber color I'm gonna paint the nose and I'm also going to paint the feet of the owl now I'm just gonna take a craft stick that I've cut in a triangle shape at the tip to make definition in the wings for the top part of the wing I'm gonna be using the burnt umber color and I'm gonna repeat that burnt umber on both sides using the craft stick sort of as a stencil. For the middle section of the wing, I'm gonna be using this Waverly chalk paint in the color Aguave. And I'm gonna use the same stick um, as a stencil for both sides of the wings for this color.
for the third and final color for their wings, I'm going to be using this Harvest Orange color. Now to complete the eyes, I'm going to take the jet black and make the uh, center circle black, leaving the small white dot. Now I did forget to cover up the hole prior to me painting where the um, uh, jute twine used to be. So I'm just going to use some hot glue and fill that in. Once that's dry, I'm going to go back over it with a little bit of the gray paint just to fill in the hole. Now to complete the sign, I'm going to be using this little base stand that came with the wood pumpkins and I'm just going to place the owl inside the stand. It actually fits perfect. Um, you can glue it if you like, but I didn't glue mine in in case I want to reuse the stand. And here's your completed fall owl sign. Thank you so much for watching today's video i hope everyone enjoyed it if you did make sure you give this video a big thumbs up as always you can leave me a comment down below and if you're not already subscribed to my channel make sure you hit that subscribe button till next time hope everyone has a great day